So the taxi driver, he got out, he walks around the front of the car, opens up the passenger seat, opens the door and bang, just knocked me in the face. I was like, holy shit. And I heard this man just start shouting at me. He had no shirt on, walking around with a pistol in his hand. I've gone from uh, meeting a guy that wanted to shoot an American to making friends with an Australian. <laughs> Have to be from right country sometimes. Yeah. And Hello my friends and very welcome to my YouTube channel. Today we're having Ryan Turnbull. He is solo traveler and he's going to share his own experience. What's the biggest difference in between of Europe and Australia? Well, I'd, I'd say Europe itself has uh, an abundance of 44 countries. Uh, obviously with 44 countries, you're going to have a lot more language, you're going to have a lot more culture and of course you're going to have a lot more history here. Australia itself is very much still a baby country and we lack a lot of history. So coming here to Europe, you get to see things that are you know, incredibly old from like the 14th, 15th, 16th century, whereas Australia is still a very new country, being a baby country that it is, it's all still 19th, 20th century stuff. My grandparents being alive um, from the first fleet, so it's still very much a baby country. Maybe some differences in people's mentality or approach or just making friends. Australians are very laid back people, very relaxed. We don't seem to really care or put too much stress into things. Most places I've been, a lot of people stress out, they have problems, they work way too hard. Whereas in Australia, we have a work to live attitude. The reason we wake up and go to work is so we can afford to have the lives that we want to have. Most people do work the standard five day a week uh, and earn 800 to a thousand dollars a week, which is amazing, which means in our spare time, we can hang out with our friends a lot more often we get a lot of time off um, we can actually go and do what we want to do check out things like the great barrier reef even head over to southeast asia and new zealand being so close to the country which is awesome so what's the most popular food or drinks in Australia and what you would personally recommend for a tourist to try first? Okay, we have a lot of traditional foods um, and a lot of things people don't realize so in a way of say dessert we have Tim Tams which is a really chocolate biscuit. Everybody loves Tim Tams. It's like a, a square shaped biscuit like that. Mm -hmm. You bite the top off it and you eat it, then you bite the bottom and then you use it like a straw and then you have Tim, uh, Tim Tam flavored milk. It is fantastic. And uh, in regards to that, we're also a nation of barbecues. We love, barbecues. yeah, mm -hmm. love barbecues and we love fresh fish. However, something that you may not already know, Australia is the only country in the world that eats its coat of arms. We eat kangaroos, we, kangaroos. Eat, we eat kangaroos, emus oh and crocodiles. And it's totally knows. normal. Yeah. So yeah, we you can buy a, a tail steak of a crocodile from the supermarket, kangaroo sausages, or uh, a fillet of, um, of emu. That's totally normal. So what would be the cost of that? What's the price of that? Uh, same as anything else, maybe 20 bucks a kilo. You just go to the supermarket. You can even get um, kangaroo mincemeat and you can make kangaroo spaghetti. What does it taste like? Uh, it's very gamey and very tough. I would not, like if you're a meat eater, I'm personally not. I would recommend not cooking it yourself. Go to a restaurant to eat it. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, get a, a sausage, a kangaroo sausage. You can cook that on a barbecue like mm -hmm. any other sausage. Oh, thank you very much for the answer. We're going to move to the next one. How long is the flight from Sydney to Europe approximately and is it easy to make friends during your connection flight? Or everyone? <laughs> Well, everyone is just busy with their cell phones. Great question. Sitting from Australia to anywhere in Europe, you are looking at about at least two years on the plane. I'm just joking. I maybe I'm, I'm, I'm just too drunk. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> not yet. No, no, not yet. Not yet. Um, so you're looking at about 20 to 24 hours in reality, although it does feel like about two years. So it's a very, very long way. In regards to meeting people at the airport, it's, yeah, it's almost impossible. Everyone's either traveling on their own or they've got their groups and they're always in a really grumpy mood, just wanting to get where they Everyone's want to go. Everyone's tired, yeah. Yeah, so it's not a very good place to make friends. I wouldn't recommend trying to make friends at an airport. Okay, so I got a video to make a friends while traveling and it was one of suggestions that you can make a friends during connection flight so it doesn't really work. Yeah, I personally, I haven't found it to work. I like to get to my destination country, find the hostel, make friends in hostels, Airbnbs, that kind of stuff. Uh, that's generally the easiest way to make friends. And all travelers all look for the same thing, excitement, new places, new people, and they're always typically open-minded. Definitely, I'd say people that stay in their hometown and never leave, they go to school, they get a job, they have a family, they have a house, they, they eventually die with the same friendship circle that they grew up with. Imagine 80 years of living the exact same life with no changes. For instance, I lived in Canada for a year and a half. 
Canadians have a real uh, live to work culture. It's instilled in them in a very, very young age that they have to go to school, they have to go to uni, they have to get a good job so they can save up for their retirement. That's their culture, that's their way of life. Whereas uh, in Australia, we have an entirely different way of life. Uh, whereas we work to save money to go traveling and have fun. So we actually have the ability to do so. Uh, whereas in Canada, they're taught from a young age not to. Go for a holiday, come back, focus on a career. I think that's uh, one of the biggest holds back is for people is a career or travel. What are the most important qualities for a female? Serioso. <laughs> yes, boss. So what is the most important qualities for a solo traveler and have you experienced any dangerous situations when you lost your money, a passport or been attacked or stabbed with a knife or anything like that? Yeah, most certainly. Uh, first of all, the first question there, the most important aspects for, for any kind of traveler for that matter is number one, you need to be open minded. Step out of your comfort zone and do things that you never would ever uh, have thought possible in your life before. And lastly, acceptance. You need to be able to accept all kinds of people in all different situations from all kinds of places in the world. In regards to negative experiences, I can recall one time in Colombia, I went from Popayan to, uh, to Cali, um, but I got a taxi from the, the bus station to the hostel that I was staying in. I remember as I was driving, I kept looking at the meter. Every time I'd look at the meter, it would jump three, four dollars at a time when it should have been two or three cents at a time. So I started to understand that the driver had uh, controls on the steering wheel to control and up the price. So I was like, uh, sir, stop, I'm not paying this, I'm not paying this. And the taxi driver started getting really angry at me. I was like, no, I'm staying in the car, I'm not moving until you actually put the price down. So the taxi driver, he got out, he walks around the front of the car, opens up the passenger seat, grabs my bags, throws it all out onto the road, uh, and then walks around to my, uh, my side, opens the door, and bang! It's knocked me in the face, I was like, holy shit! He's a private driver, or you just booked from uh, any oh. agency, or you just got him from the street? So I just went to the taxi stands and just got in there, oh. was like 30 taxis, and I got in the one that was ready to take me. That happened, he dragged me out of the taxi, kicked me on the, on the ground a few times, uh, then threw my other bag on top of me, then he got in his taxi and he drove away. I found myself to be very lucky in that instance. Uh, I had a MacBook Pro, I had my GoPro, my phone, my passport, and I had all my money with me. He stole nothing, just beat the crap out of me. Um, so I eventually gathered my stuff, went into the hostel and told the hostel what happened. Uh, and this is why I think Colombians are some of the most hospitable people in the world. The, the man at the reception, he actually rang his friend, got his friend to come and pick me up in a car to drive me into town to an ATM so I could get money, uh, which is awesome. By the time I got back to the hostel, the reception staff had actually gone out of their way to get groceries and actually cook me dinner. So I got home to a proper Colombian feast cooked by them absolutely free of charge which I found to be really incredibly kind to those people. So you got to like very bad and very good experience at the same time, the same day. Exactly, yeah. Have any other stories to share? Yeah, I got. Uh, I do have a friend in Ecuador, his name is Diego. I was walking around, I took a wrong alley and I heard this man just start shouting at me. I turned around, he wasn't speaking any English, he had no shirt on, walking around with a pistol in his hand. He comes up and he's just talking to me right in my face. He goes, uh, are you American? I was like, no, I'm not American, I'm Australian. He's like, Australiano! Put his gun away, he puts his arm around me, come to my house, my mum will cook you dinner. Oh my god, like, he want to shoot you first and then he yeah. offered you a dinner. So I've gone from uh, meeting a guy that wanted to shoot an American to making friends with an Australian. <laughs> have to be from the right country sometimes yeah. and that's enough to make friends. Yeah, just don't be American. I'm joking. Do the most Australians love to travel within their country or abroad? And what are the most uh, famous destinations? Okay, so typically Australians do like to travel overseas. Currently we are locked in, the government will not let us leave our country with COVID. But uh, typically because we do have the second highest minimum wage in the world, at a young age, 15 years old, you can earn $20 an hour. So by the time we're 18 and ready to travel, we've got, you know, twenty, thirty thousand dollars saved up. And typically we just go overseas and travel and spend it overseas. The most common destinations are definitely going to vary depending on the kind of trip. For instance, like if someone wants to go on a holiday, likely they'll go to Bali because it's generally quicker, easier and cheaper to fly from Australia to, to Bali or Southeast Asia as opposed to one part of Australia to another. So that's where we would go on say a one, two, three week vacation. When it comes down to working holidays, uh, being under the Queen's monarch, I'd say most people, most Australians love to go to Canada. 
Uh, obviously, Australia being a hot country, uh, they like we like to get over and try snowboarding, go to Whistler, things like that. Otherwise, uh, you'll find a lot of Australians live and work in the United Kingdom. But is there no snow mountains somewhere in Australia? Yeah, there is. It's just really crap snow. It's like Falls Creek. We get maybe three months of snow a year, and I'd say it's mostly man-made. So there are so many accents in English-speaking countries. Have you ever faced any problems of understanding other people who speak the same language, but you thought they are speaking foreign language? <laughs> yeah, most certainly. So back in 2016 or 2015, I went on my first working holiday uh, to the UK and was working in London. But uh, one of my colleagues, her name is Katie. She's from Newcastle, right up north in the UK. When I first met her for the first three months, I just didn't talk to her because I didn't think she could speak English. It took about three months to realize she was speaking English. <laughs> I just seemed deaf to the accent. Uh, and I also find like South Island New Zealanders are incredibly hard to understand as well. I did meet uh, one guy, one of my best mates in the world, Ethan Harwood. He's a South Islander from New Zealand. Uh, we're in a hostel room in London together and he said to me, I miss my beard. And it took me about like 10 goes <laughs> to realize what he said. Like he's, he's got a big beard and I thought he was saying that he, <laughs> yeah, I thought he misses his beard and I'm, I'm like, Mate, you, what do you mean you miss your beard? You, you, it's on your face. He's like, I miss my beard. And he's getting angry and he's getting angry. And then he's like jumping on his bed. It's like, oh, you mean you miss your bed? Oh, you want to go home? Now I understand. Yeah. It's like, I, I got some shit in my bed. I want some shit in my yeah. bed. 